Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast. I'm your host, Chris Arnold. As always, thank you for joining us today. I'm excited. I have got an REI radio student for you. I like bringing in, again, we have students closing deals all over the country utilizing radio, but I'm always looking for people to kind of come in and add a different twist, come from a different place into real estate and how they got here. And I've got Michael McCaffrey on today. We're going to talk about his background. And if you're listening today, here's what you're going to get. A guy that's come really, and I'm going to let him talk about it, really big corporate world, uh, retired and is now back in the game doing real estate. And I love what he said. I'm here to play the game, but I've retired and I want something that's not labor intensive. And so this is the reason that I picked up radio and, and why I'm setting up my business this way. So Michael or Mike, I know you like to go by Mike. Welcome to the show, buddy. Glad to have you. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. So for those that don't know you, man, give, give us a quick snapshot because you and I were chatting, you know, before we hit record and you were telling me a little bit about your background and it's, it's impressive where you come from, but whatever you can kind of share, give us a little bit of a, a taste of what you were doing before you're doing investing in real estate. Well, I've been a, a real estate broker, um, for about 25 years. And I also was in the foreclosure business. I was one of the largest uh, vendors in the country for some of the major banks um, for 25 years in a foreclosure crisis. And basically we handled like 13 states and um, we, were, we had three offices. We had one in New York, we had one in Dallas, we had one in Simi Valley. And basically I did that for 25 years. And a couple of years ago, I decided to get out of it and retired. And after a couple of years, I decided about a year ago, I started listening to Brent Daniels. And like Brent Daniels said on a podcast one day, he says, you know, he says, why don't you give this guy Chris Arnold a call? And, I, and I'm thinking to myself, who the, hell, who the heck is Chris Arnold? And so after I listened to the podcast, I got off the podcast, I started doing some checking and I found, I found Chris Arnold on radio and I started listening to it. And I'm going, damn, this is the way to go. It's not labor intensive. I don't have to have a lot of people to run this. I can just basically sit at the beach and let, let it run itself. And I was all for it because I love the beach. So I love South Beach. I go there a lot. You know, it's a great thing to do. Just do it remotely. And just sit back and be Chris Arnold's little canary. And that's what my goal is to be. Absolutely. Man, you and I think yeah. a lot alike, right? I mean, I want to build businesses that serve me, not in which I feel like I'm a slave to them. I don't you know, I think a lot of people start businesses and rather than owning a business, what they end up owning is a job. Um, they're working way more, having a lot more stress, uh, you know, doing this new gig of being an entrepreneur than they were working a nine to five. And that defeats the whole purpose, which Mike, you and I got into this whole game for freedom. So, so what attracted you to radio was the fact that this is fundamentally a set it and forget it, which for a guy like you that, you know, has really done, you know, your time, uh, 25 years, as you said, doing the foreclosure world, you're ready to kind of step into a season of your life where you're still making money. But as you said, enjoying your life, enjoying the season that you're in. So I'm curious, like, what were you doing to generate leads before radio? How are you trying to create some opportunities to wholesale, fix and flip and so forth? Well, basically, for the last couple of years, I did some mailings, and I and you know I was doing probably two or three thousand a month, but I was getting I was getting some some leads on it. Um, I probably did between ten to fourteen flips in the last couple of years. I mean, I didn't do the work; I hired the work out, and um, I just kept saying to myself, "This is labor intensive. This is kind of like what I'm used to doing." I mean, I'm not, I'm used to working a lot of hours, but you know what? As life goes on, and you get to the top of the mountain, and you go, "Hey." Was it really worth it? And you go, I don't know about that. So, and I've decided that time is much more important. You know, time is a commodity that you can't, you can't put a price on. And as you get older, you find out you can't put a price on it. And you've really got to start thinking about that. It's not about how much money. So radio, I mean, you set it with these radio stations and you just tweak it, watch it, and just call your, call your leads. That's all you got to do. <laughs> It's that simple. I mean, as we interview more and more students, like, wish we could tell you that this is a super complicated process. It's, it's not rocket science. As we always say, once you set up radio, you only have to do two things, pay your bill monthly and answer the phone when it rings. Like that is all it takes to manage a radio station. So let's talk about setting it up, right? Let's say Mike scale of one to 10. 
Tim being like, man, this was super difficult to set up. One being easy. What was the setup process? Because people are listening going, okay, this guy, Mike's retired. I'm sure he's not wanting to come in and just spend all of his time on a setup of a marketing channel. What would you rate the difficulty of the setup? Well, the setup is very easy. One thing that you do that a lot of the other people in real estate with other different streams of um, of marketing do is you basically tell people how to do it. I mean, there's Ari Simply with Danielle, who was a superstar. You give us the system. You you tell us how to set the program up. You tell us how much we should be spending for marketing and everything else. And basically, the only difficult thing that I saw in it is calling these radio stations and trying to get the money, trying to get the ads that you want for the price that you want, because they really think that you're a lunatic when you call. And these mom and pop shops are mom and pop shops are a lot easier to negotiate with. But I mean, I was doing some of the bigger ones, and um, Grace gave me four to work with, and I must have sent her. The mom and pops, I think I sent over three or four proposals and she said, great. But I used to sit in my office after she would send, send one back from iHeart, for example. And I would look at it and she'd say, well, this looks good, this looks good, that not, doesn't look good, you gotta get another proposal. So I would call iHeart. And I, honestly, I'm not, I wasn't accustomed to just, you know, somebody telling me what to do. And, and you know, I had, to become, <laughs> I had to become kind of teachable, you know, like a child. And yeah. I know how to change. I mean, that's one of the one of my one of my assets in life. I had to learn how to change during my life. I, I have learned how to change. I'm well, man, I'm back to I'm back to first grade here. And I would just shake my head. I put my hand in my desk like this, going, oh boy. So then I, I got to the point with iHeart. I finally called them and I said, look, it, I can't keep going back to Chris and Grace. I said, I don't have the tenacity to keep doing this with my tail between my legs. I said, you guys either got to give me something. And I started calling one of them, Monty Hall, let's make a deal today. What's the deal today, folks? And um, I don't know, they just, they, they kind of thought about it or something. And then another time I called them and I said, hey, I said, why don't I pick you up with a limo and you bring the contract, but don't fill it out. And I said, and I'll take you guys out to lunch. I said, and while we're out to lunch, I said, you guys can have a few beers afterwards. After lunch, I said, I'll take you home and dump you on this, on in front of your, your front yards for your wives. I said, but I'll fill the contract out. Is that, is that a deal? They don't want they, but they thought it was funny. And the thing with negotiating radio is the hardest part is it's very easy to get in tit for tat. And you can't do that. You really got to set, when you're negotiating with them, you got to make it like a game. Like, you know what? If you lose, you move on to the next. That's, that's, how, you, that's how you got to look at it because you can really get into a negative conversation with them very easily. But if you make it a game, it's hard for them to get mad at you. And they, they honestly kind of look at, you know, they kind of, I think they look forward to talking to you every couple of weeks. But what's this guy, what's this guy going to call today about when he's half, half off the rails most of the time? And that's what they think. I love it. So I want to give some context here, Mike, to kind of everything, because you hit on some great points. I want to make sure everyone listening gets. So Mike first is obviously making the point of one of the secret sauces, one of the things that we help you do with radio is we are literally helping you buy it at a major discount. And if you're listening, you know that all of your money on a real estate transaction is made on the purchase. The same is true with radio. So Mike is saying like, I'm calling these stations and their price is X and we're way below here. But I know Chris is telling me that this whole process is going to work and I'm seeing other students do it. And then boom, Mike's coming in and locking in these stations at literally 20, 25 cents on the dollar, which is what we educate our students to do. The other thing as well is if you hear the name Grace, we have a whole team um, that supports our students. So Grace uh, manages all of my radio personally for my business and of course helps all the students around the country as well. And if you hear iHeart, this is what we're laughing about. Every station kind of has a different vibe to it, right? And iHeart obviously is known as a little bit more, I'm just say they are the most cocky station out there. They are the hardest to negotiate. And Mike has come in, he's already advertising on two stations and now he's picked up two more stations from iHeart. So he's got a combined total of four radio stations. So Mike, let's talk a little bit about these stations you have. The two that you picked up from iHeart are just about to start. So when we talk about numbers, we're talking about the two radio stations that you've been on for two and a half months. How many calls 
have you generated or leads over two and a half months off the two stations you had? You gave me that number. What was it? Between 130 and 140. 130 to 140 leads in two and a half months. How much is your monthly budget for those two stations? 1300. 13, that's for one or both of them? Both. Both stations. So $1,300, two radio stations, combined total of roughly around 130 to 140 leads over a two and a half month period. Bro, that's fantastic. And I'm going to keep using your way of saying it. Was it labor intensive? No, not at, all. not at all. Not at all. Not at I mean, all. It's kind of funny because I'm like, well, I'm like working 20, 25 hours a week going, maybe I should be finding some more to do. Like I, I'm like, and I'm going, no, 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 this is okay. This is okay. So, yeah. um, well, let's a, talk about the success you've had. Cause so far we were talking, you've closed a real estate deal. You've listed two properties because you're licensed to be able to do that. You've already picked up a duplex to buy and hold. And then behind that, as we were talking, you have a couple more listings coming down the pipeline and so forth. So I mean, how do you feel about the overall success? I mean, you're doing really well the first two and a half months. Oh, it's incredible. It's, it's, it's the way to go. I mean, it's basically, you, you have to, the thing that I want people to understand is, is you say something in one of your podcasts that every, all the data that you gave me, and I've been in business a long time, very few times is the data so accurate. And your data is accurate. Like you, one of the, for an example, like one thing you say is, make sure you have somebody answer the phone. Well, sometimes I miss the calls because they go to Ari simply through Danielle and then they come over to my cell phone right now. So sometimes it goes straight to voicemail for some reason. And sometimes I'm not available to answer. I get back to those people. Tw- I, I only make contact 25% of the time. So you're right on the money. The thing is, is everybody should be a canary of Chris Arnold and do it exactly. And I mean exactly <laughs> the hey, 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 you say. That's what makes it work. And you know something? When it's not working, you ask yourself, what am I not doing that he said? And I'll guarantee you that they'll find something. Absolutely. And I appreciate that. It means, it means a lot. And my deal has always been to underpromise and overdeliver, right? So there's no reason we need to exaggerate the process. We just come in, we tell you guys the truth. But the thing I know about radio is it's going to back itself up because it literally is one of the best marketing channels that I've ever come across for myself. That's why I'm taking the time to educate people like yourself. Mike can help set up. And the cool part is, I knew this was going to happen throughout the market because it impacted my business at a high level. And so each student we have coming on like yourself is telling the same story again and again. So now that you've got radio up and going, besides the fact that it's set and forget it, tell me another aspect that you really enjoy about radio as a marketing channel, just for you personally. What are you enjoying besides the fact it's easy to to run? Meeting new people. Um, what about the, I think we were talking earlier, what were you saying about the quality of the call? Oh, the quality of the call, anybody that calls on radio has a problem in their life. I mean, and, and really it's kind of nice to go in and help somebody really, these people are very, very, very appreciative when you take, when you, when you solve their problem for you. And basically it's a way to solve problems for people and help people to move on with their lives through a crisis. A lot of people are in a crisis and there's going to be a lot more of it because I've gotten calls from the, the larger banks wanting me to come out of retirement. And I say, look, at here's an example. Scott is one of the guys' first name, Scott. When I worked for you, my blood pressure was 145 over 95. When I was taking blood pressure menace for 20 years, since I retired, my blood pressure is 106 over 60. And I'm a positive guy. What would you do? Exactly. <laughs> I love it. You know, every time we're on the phone, man, I call you, you just crack me up, man, right? So, man, you were working in that world, just burning at both ends. Now you're on the retirement side. And I love how you tell a guy like that, like, what are you thinking? You think I want to step back into that world? But the biggest thing I hear is like, this is why I think you're so interesting, right? I mean, people come on from different facets of life and different seasons. And you're this guy that is retired who literally was busting, again, I'll say busting your ass for the last 20, 25 years. And you're ready to really enjoy kind of the back nine of your life. And so I love that filtering radio through your world is just such a good fit for you because it's supporting the lifestyle that you want, correct? And that is to really not be overburdened day to day with this real estate investment arm that you want to keep going. 
Yes, because I, I still have a 14 year old who was the love of my life, a, a daughter. And uh, I still, you know, have got to stay around here pretty much both half of the time. So it's good for me to be, to have something going on here because if I don't have something going on, I can get myself in trouble very quickly. Yeah, um, I'm the same way, man. I just <laughs> talking about retiring. I, I think they'll get to a point in my life where maybe the reason you work begins to shift a little bit more. Like it goes to, like for you, you know, you can retire, but a hundred percent you're doing what you want to do just because you're in a season of life that you can do that. Right. And so I just imagine myself, I don't know that I'll ever really be able to stop building. Like I just love building things. I love tinkering with things. And so my motivation and the amount of hours and things like that, you know, might adjust or go down, but I just love the game. I love the game of business. And I feel like you're the same way. Mike, you just love playing the great game of business. Well, the thing is, Chris, is you're farther ahead of me than I was in the game at your age. I mean, I worked 90, 80, 90 hours a week and I raised a family, four children on my own the first time around. And I have, I have a, a 14 year old daughter now, but I worked 80, 90 hours a week for 25 years. Wow. And then I retired. And the thing is, is you value time. Time, time flies. And the thing about life is, as you get older, you go, you know what? You, you, I have to do something, but I'm not negotiating my time. That's right. Awesome. I don't. I only have so much. And you know what? If I could buy time, I'd be the first one at the gate to buy time. Mike, can. let me ask you a question. You got some young hustlers listening right now, some entrepreneur guys. Let's say the guys that are in their 20s, 30s, maybe even early 40s, right? They're burning at both ends. They're, they're grinding it out, but they're in a season where they also have families. They're married. They might have young kids and so forth. Looking at now, if you could like look at those guys and even on this kind of podcast, speak directly to them, what would you say to them now that you're at the season of life that you're in? What would you look back and go, guys, if I could like literally grab you by the shoulders and tell you this, what would you tell those young hustlers out there? I would tell them to understand the, the value of time. I would say, you know, you're, you're going to have plenty of time to reach the top of the mountain. If you keep doing what you're doing and you do it consistently and you set up processes, I believe in processes. I believe in the processes is what make people successful. I don't believe it was me that made me successful. I believe it was the processes. The process and the machine will make you successful. Is to find a balance. Get, get with people like Chris Arnold. People that understand time. I didn't have those people around me when I was younger. I was so consumed with being becoming the biggest and the most, you know, the best and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And the thing is, is time is the probably it's more important than Benjamin Franklin. The money, the money is not that important. The time is. And to get with people like you, I'm, I envy you at your age to understand time. I didn't understand time until I was 50 years old, started to understand it. You know, and, and the thing is, I had to get to the top of the mountain. Maybe you got to the top of the mountain earlier than I did, and you realized the thing about time. I didn't. And that's what people need to realize. They need not to make the moral missteps, as you talk about. Leaders get into power and the money, and um, you know, you, you think that you're almost godlike. And you're very, you're very right about moral missteps. Very two out of three leaders crash and burn. It's not how much grit you got. If you have a lot of grit and you make a moral misstep, you can have a problem. I don't care how much grit you have. Absolutely, man. I just, everyone listening, man, I hope wherever you were at that point that that message went past your brain and hit right at your heart. Because you got a guy right now telling you, man, the time is more important than the Benjamins. It's the one thing that you can't get back. And I love what you said about we all have time, but we got to get to a place in our life where we understand time that were, as I feel like you're saying, like, I, I've, I've always had it, but it wasn't until I got older that I understood the value. And, and I think anyone listening goes, well, I value time. And I think you would argue and go, well, you think you value time. But if I were to get in and watch you and follow you day to day and how you're spending your time and you're grinding it out and you're sacrificing family and you're sacrificing your health and your sleep and all of these things, I feel like you'd look at a guy like that and go, you're deceiving yourself. You, you don't value time because you say you do, but your lifestyle points opposite to the fact of that. So dude, thanks for coming, man. Just straight from the gut and the heart on that. I love it. So starting to wrap up here, Mike, like <laughs> everyone's listening. 
what do you want to do with radio? I mean, you're about to be live on four stations. Um, what do you think you want to do over the next like year? Are you going to pick up more stations? Like, well, what's this game look like? Well, one, of, one of the things I realized, I always had two personal assistants in, in the corporate world. And I always thought everything was a, revolved around me. And one thing I've learned about radio in the last couple of years and, you know, retiring and being a one person like organization along with contractors and stuff is my personal assistants were very important to me. And I need, I, they basically started me off on my day and said, Mike, you, you're going to do this, this, and this today. This is what's scheduled for you. And I would follow the, I would follow the bone. Well, I've been struggling with that. So I just turned around last week and, I, and I'm trying a Chris Arnold thing about hiring people that are good people. Now with the MBAs, I've been through that. I've hired thousands of MBA people. I'm going with people that are good people. I hired one that is computer savvy and really has done some marketing. He's got a history of marketing and he's basically going to start running the organization. So answer your question where I'm going to be. I want to have like Mitch has down in San Antonio, San Antonio Texas, maybe send to 10, seven to 10 main stations here in New York. And then I'm going into a secondary market down South and I welcome competition. Anybody go to Chris Arnold, pay him because I'll tell you something. Everything he says is right on the money. And the, the statistics are, are dead on. I, yeah. I'm still kind of been kind of shocked when I was going through the negotiating with iHeart. One time I had my head in my hand like this on my desk and I'm going, he lives in Tulum, Mexico. I, got, I went up the stairs and I got my passport out and I said, okay, my passport's still good. I was going to fly down to Tulum and see you. I say, look, we got to talk about this. I love it. I swear to God, I was going to do that. And that's when Coronas was really hitting and I checked I checked with my kids and one of my, one of my daughters. She said, you probably shouldn't go down there, dad. I said, you know? and I was going to go down to Tulum, Mexico. And then I was going to email Grace when I was down there and say, Grace, how do I get a hold of Chris? I'm down here. I love it, man. Well, I tell you what, Mike, I just love your personality. I love the wisdom that you got in your experience, man. So you come down and hang out with me anytime you want in Tulum. So if you're listening, um, I think now we've been doing radio, uh, helping people for more than a year. We've sold out a ton of markets at this point. But again, it's time. It's 2021. And with me, as Mike's told you, you're just going to, what you see is what you get. So here's what you want to do. Go to wholesalinginc.com forward slash REI radio. Again, wholesalinginc.com forward slash REI radio. Book a call. Now is the time to do it, obviously. Again, just start with questions. Do your due diligence. I'm not saying that radio is a perfect fit for everyone but it has been a fit uh, for a lot of people um, that we brought through this program. Uh, and that's what you're hearing and do your due diligence, ask questions, but get the ball started. And uh, there's going to be a point in time uh, it's starting to speed up and come, you know, Mike, that there's not going to be any markets left. Um, we will have sold out markets and we have people on waiting lists now and people begging us to get into certain markets. And we're like, sorry, uh, we have a student that's already in there doing a great job. And so we're going to continue to support them. So check us out. And of course, as always, if you want to put a face with the name and uh, see Mike as well, um, go to YouTube uh, and subscribe at Chris Arnold Real Estate and you can check us out there. So Mike, wrap it up. Um, somebody's listening today and I think now people have really heard about radio. We've done a good job of spreading the word. But let's say someone's like, man, 2021's here. You know, I'm still a little bit on the fence on this radio. Should I do this thing or not? You know, what would you wrap up somebody that's like almost there and maybe they're like, you know, Mike, I just need that little push. Maybe I got a little fear. Maybe I got a little anxiety. Maybe I'm trying to make sure it's the right timing, whatever that is. But what would you tell that person about radio that's trying to make that final decision? Well, if they want to live their life and not just work all the time and, be, and become obsessed with having to work 80 to 100 hours a week, radio is the way to go. I mean, you could run a successful business doing this 25, 30 hours a week if you build your team. The thing I would advise people to do when you go right, when you start doing radio, you need to listen to Chris and what Grace and Alan and everybody else says, Sierra, you need to do specifically, specifically what they tell you to do, because then you will be successful. It's a no brainer. It's impossible for it to work. Negotiating with some of the stations like iHeart, Cumulus is difficult. But you just stick with it. You don't give up, and you go to you go to Grace and say, "I'm frustrated." 
They're very, very good. They're good people. That's the bottom line. You have good people that you, and I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you did it because I've been in, I mean, I had a whole recruiting department with, with like eight people and I could never, I might've hired one out of 50 like that. So, I mean, I don't know how you did it. It's a, it's a big compliment. I appreciate it. So I think the thing I'm most proud of is the strength of the team that we built around us. And honestly, it just comes down to taking care. My brother used to tell me this, Chris, take great care of the people that take great care of you. And he was referring to the employees and people that work for us. And so that's always really been my model to care about the totality of their lives, not just the job that I'm hiring them for. So, and you heard today, Mike, I just want to make sure if anyone heard uh, as a resource, I always want to touch on it. Uh, RE Simply, uh, just to provide explanation, is a CRM system, but is a one stop shop uh, for everything. So rather than having DocuSign and you know, skip tracing and doing direct mail. And let's say every other, you know, call rel, auto dialers, uh, uh, KPI dashboard, I could go on forever. Any a la carte software you have, what RE Simply has done is literally put everything in one place. So it got rid of 10 different programs we have and now all we use is RE Simply. So Mike is using it as well. And so that's what we're referring to if you hear that. And so if you want to check that out, of course, you can go to resimply.com forward slash Chris. And again, that's resimply, S-I-M-P-L-I.com forward slash Chris. And I'll tell you straight up, it's a hundred bucks a month. And so with the promo code, you get different discounts and so can forth. Can I say something about resimply? Yeah, please do. I am a moron when it comes to computers. Danielle and Ari simply spent three days with me, 90 minutes each time. Try, we, had it, we had it on a Zoom call. We had it on all kinds of things, trying to get me to figure something out and to get me to do something. And she finally got me to do it. But I don't even know where. She's got the patience of a saint. I, 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 I was like, and I, I wouldn't call her back because I was feeling guilty about being such a moron putting her through it. I was like, wow. So... Yeah. They're great over there. That's why yeah, they are. I really speak on behalf of Sherrod. Again, I want to be around people that really, you know, look at their business as meant to serve. And again, if a company like that is willing to take that amount of time to you, I think it speaks a lot. So thanks so much, Mike, for coming on. And to the rest of you guys, we really appreciate you joining us. And until next time, we will catch you soon when we add more value. Talk to you later.